guys, it is Sophia, the Shadow Hunter, and today I'm going to be reviewing another book book review for you guys of music, and that is Iron Man, 30 Years of the Beast, the complete another is biography of Paul Stanning. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 5 out of... I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. However, with this being unauthorized, I, at the beginning, it took me kind of a little while to get into his writing style. I liked his writing style. It was easy to read. It was fast-paced. It was, I think, a little bit thicker at parts and harder to get through it. I stayed up till like 1 a.m. basically finishing this book. I just got a few pages left to read, which was with the leftover interview, which I'm not sure if I'm going to read it. I probably will get around to it. But this book was very meaty and interesting. It talks about Iron Man's long history when Steve Harris formed the band. I think it was about 46 years ago on in December. So they just had their anniversary. Um, it talked about um, P Paul Deano, them leaving, them getting Bruce back, Bruce leaving, them getting Braze Bailey, and the Bruce coming back, his solo work. It talked, surprisingly, it did not talk at all about um, Steve Harris's solo album, but I'm thinking this is because this came out before that happened, that's why, duh. And this was a great book, I highly recommend it. Um, I was so excited to get my hands on this. There's a couple other Maiden books I want to read. I'm so excited Adrian Smith is coming out with the book. I wish Steve Harris would write one. So, I really like this book. However, I wish there would have been more information about Steve and Bruce's relationship. I watched their documentary. Um, maybe I can do a review about it. About their, It's available on YouTube. You guys should check it out. Um, the History of Iron Maiden. It's like a two-hour documentary thing and it really talks about their relationship you know and they were fighting they would fight because Bruce liked to go up where Steve was and so they would um Bruce would kick Steve with his stand because they would want to be at the same place I thought they both had kind of the lead singer personality which this book talked about um and you know they obviously grew up and they're able to work together. They realized they had something really sweet and amazing, and they wanted to put a white side, you know, their feelings, their anger, their emotions, and work together, which was great because if not, I would not be able to see Maiden as I did when I saw them in September, and it was so awesome. I really want to see them again. Hopefully, I can. Maybe I can go see them in the UK or somewhere because I already wanted to see Rush out of the United States. That has not happened yet, so maybe it can happen for Iron Maiden. Um, so this is over 30 years of the Beast, talking about all the different guitar players. For the longest time, Maiden could not keep people in the band. And I'm like, well, kind of obviously dealt with how Steve Harris was. Obviously, it was his band. He could do what he wants with it. It's his band. It's his baby. He came up with the name of it, you know, and he has rights to do that. I think maybe he could have probably been a little nicer at times, but, you know, no one's perfect. So... And so something else interesting, the only two people who consistently stayed in the band was Steve Harris and Nico McBrain. And Nico didn't come to Peace of Mind, um, which is one of my favorite albums. Something else very interesting, I love Peace of Mind. It is based off of Dune by Frank Herbert, if you guys did not know. They were actually going to call it Dune, but he d did not, Frank Herbert did not like Iron Maiden, especially and he did not like heavy metal. So they, he gave them the rights to use that but they could not use it and I wanted, I meant to read Dune last year and I didn't read it so I need to read it this year. So I got a lot of books to read for music which is always how it's been. It's gotten more which is awesome because I like to combine my reading well, my love of reading music together because if not I don't have time to do all of it you know just to listen to music and read whatever I want to read or history. I like to get everything in one source like you can get with reading music books or listening to music like Iron Maiden and Rush when we talk a lot about history. So, this book was very captivating, it was very interesting, it was interesting to see the different interviews, their ups and downs of being a band, um, they talked a lot about their um, relationship with the man who created Eddie, their mascot, who's one of the best selling mascots, and lots of bands have used them for their shirts and things like Metallica and some other bands, it talked about, you know, um, Def Leppard, other British bands they toured with. Um, things like that and it was very very interesting and I really liked it I think that with this being unauthorized it maybe felt a little less legit maybe is that a hard time reading like I didn't necessarily have a hard time reading it 
But at first, it was like, I don't know who's talking here, but it's because he interviewed these people, and so he's got interviews, I guess, from other people, or he uses other people's interviews, because it is unauthorized. But I still think it was very good. I have, since I read Bruce Dickinson's book, Iron Maiden, and I've read other books, I read Generalized by Phil Collin, a lot of these facts in here, I've seen in other books, so I'm pretty sure a lot of it probably is accurate. That's so great, if you read these books, excuse me, like Rush and Def Leppard and Iron Maiden, you will see that there there's a lot of the same things there because the people who took on Def Leppard, they could have took on Iron Maiden and they took Def Leppard, which is obviously fun because De Def Leppard did great and so did Iron Maiden. Um, but this was a very great book. It talked about a lot about Bruce's solo work, which I love. I need to review it for you guys. Um, his solo work is great. He also, I'm seeming to notice that in the 60s and the 70s, like you see with with um, Journey and Iron Maiden, the lead singers did not like rock. They did not like heavy metal. They say, you know, it's really hard being a singer, and I'm sure it is. I know it is. Being a musician is a hard, doing any type of art is really hard. But they just did not like the metal. He wanted you a little bit soft, you know, and Steve Perry, he did not want to do rock. He wanted to do, you know, jazzy ballads, and that's why they could not keep the band together. That's why they had to go find their singer. That's why Steve left, because he fell out of love with it. And that's almost what happened to Bruce, except Bruce left earlier, but he only took an eight-year hiatus, where with Steve Perry, you know, he took like a 30-year hiatus. So I'm glad it wasn't that long. Um, but this is a great book for those people who want to know more about Maiden. I highly recommend the documentary. This is Iron Maiden, 30 Years of the Beast. Um, so Bruce's first album was Number of the Beast. And it took me a while to get into that album. It also took me a while. At first, I was not crazy with the first two Iron Maiden albums. I really do like Killers. Um... Iron Maiden is good too. I need to go back and listen to them. I have them on LPs, so I love listening to the LPs. It is so much fun. Um, and then talked about peace of mind, you know, finding Nico, who's they, he sounded like Neil, and I'm pretty sure he was a Rush fan, and him, um, you know, coming to Christianity. And it talked about, um, you know, Adrian left Iron Maiden around the time Bruce Dickinson did and they came back together at the same time. And that really, I think, helped put Iron Maiden back together like they used to be in the good old days. And um, so also Bruce also worked with, um, with Janik. He was in Gogamog with some of the other, um, Paul Sampson and Paul, I mean, Paul Diano. And they all work together, and it's so cool how they all, you know, they're like this one huge big metal family. But what they say is that Maiden will always be a family, they are family to each other. And let me read some of the quotes that Bruce said here at the end. Okay. He said, I don't know what's going with, what, what it's going with them. Well, I'm part of them anymore. Well, I'm not a part of them anymore. I have an attachment to them. I still talk to the band. I always seem to be, seem to put it this way. We may do, be divorced or separated, but we will share the same bathroom. I don't want to see them disappear down the tubes or anything like that. I'd just be ashamed to see all their past work be washed away if, t if people don't like the new stuff. Bruce Dickinson. And let me read you a, a quote from Steve. Martin Birch. Here we go. We always believe that a song is a short story, and when you pick something from the, within the lyric that describes the song, lyrics are important. Though the, the most important thing, I would say, I would say the music and the melody of the vocal lines are the most important. However, having said that, the lyrics should be shouldn't be a lot of crap. Steve Harris. So there you have Steve Harris himself talking. I hope you guys like this video. Please leave a comment down below if you haven't. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And please let me know in the comments down below other books like this you want me to read or other books I should read. And I'll see you guys next time in our video. Goodbye.